All right, guys, just want to thank everybody for coming out. Exciting time of year. Getting ready to be involved in football. It's been a long time to get back to it. We had a great offseason, a great winter, a great spring. Recruiting's gone fantastic. Our players have had a tremendous amount of energy and juice about them throughout the whole offseason and summer. And we've gone into our training camp with, uh, with that same momentum, that same energy, and uh, it's been fun to be around. It's also nice around here to see some of the uh, uh, unbelievable construction underway. So at the Boston College campus right now is, uh, are a lot of good things and uh, fun, to, fun to be around it. So we're heading into camp. We've, got, uh, we've improved at all positions. Um, you know, our, 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 our team is maturing. Um, we have some marquee players. Um, we have some good team speed. And uh, we're off to a good start in training camp and uh, enjoying watching that. So we'll continue to grind through training camp and uh, watch this team develop and grow. Uh, it's a short amount of time before the opener. So, you know, we all know that there's a real sense of urgency, players and everybody, coaches, everybody. So uh, with that, any questions you have? Coach, can you talk a little bit about the uh, the different skill sets that each quarterback brings to the table? Um, not necessarily the quarterback situation or who's going to play or anything like that, but just what each guy on the field can do. Well, you know, we start with uh, Darius um, and um, and Anthony. I mean, they're they're both they both can throw the ball. Uh, they're accurate. Um, they have good arm strength. Uh, they're athletic. All of our guys are athletic can throw the ball right now, uh, are pretty accurate. Uh, I think knowledge, you know, of, of, the, of what we're doing, mastery of what we're doing is probably where the separations occur. Um, I mean, John Fadul has great, great mastery of what we're doing, very bright guy, really on top of it, um, as obviously Anthony and, 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 and Darius. Uh, the younger guys, I mean, there's exceptional talent there, really, you know, uh, EJ, um, is a fantastic athlete. I mean, he has great measurables. He can throw the ball. He's very competitive. He's just absorbing it all right now, trying to get it all down. He got here mid-semester. It gave him a little advantage, um, you know. But the rest of the guys are—they're they're all bright. They're all—they're all good players. I mean, they—they they can chuck it. It's a real—it's a quarterback room now. There's a room of quarterbacks, and um, you know, uh, three of them are extremely young. Right, I mean they're <laughs> true freshmen, um, and then Anthony's just a redshirt freshman, and Darius is the older guy in in in, in the group. But the talent level is high, and uh, watching it on the field, I just the level of play every day gets better there. I'm really encouraged by what I see. Um, John Baker is a guy who. Um was kind of forced into a leadership role at a very young age uh, um, due to the graduations of all the linemen the year before. Just how important has he been to this program uh, during his time here? Well, I mean, John's an A1A kid, right? I mean, he's a great student, a great human being. He's a really good football player. Um, and he's had to absorb probably some of those roles when he probably wasn't really ready for that. Um, but I think along with him now, Chris Lindstrom's really assumed the role like that as well. I think those guys are kind of bonding with the leadership and the demands on the offensive line in terms of the bar that they want to have set for their room. Um, so, you know, as that group matures, which, you know, obviously Aaron now has played for two years, um, you know, and, and it helps to bring along some of the young guys and even some of the guys that really haven't played that much. So John is a great role model. He has a fantastic work ethic and he's a really just a great human being, I mean, and, and a very bright guy and, and, and carries himself the way you should. So he's been a good role model for, for everybody, but certainly in the line, offensive line meeting room. Microphone on. Coach, getting back to the QB situation, mm -hmm. general question. When you have two guys who seem to be pretty close in a competition, mm -hmm. what's the message you like to share with them about what you're looking for as a head coach when you're trying to determine who's going to lead that offense? Leadership, I mean, drive the football team, you know, drive the team. I mean, the intangible stuff is so important at that position. How you carry yourself, how you, how your, you know, how do your teammates, you know, feel you carry yourself? Can, are they attracted 
to you in terms of being a leader? Uh, can you drive them? Can you say the hard things? Can you push the team on the field? All those things are really, I think, very, very important. When you have the right guy, that's happening. Um, I've never been around a guy that doesn't possess that and really be a great player. I mean, so, um, you know, every day, in, 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 you know, you always, it's always about, you know, is a guy, you know, is it, is it a youth thing? Is it a maturity thing? Because, you know, when you get here, you're young, you're, you know, you're, you're a little intimidated, you know, but, it, but after a while, it no longer would be that, right? So, I mean, um, you're trying to evaluate the natural it factor and then how much of that can continue to grow with maturity or, or, or is that maxed out where it is? Um, so, I mean, we really look a lot at that. That's really important. When you, when you are competing for championships, you, know, you don't often see that happen without one of those kind of marquee guys that has that uniqueness to them. There's not that many of them. I happen to have been around two in my career. I've seen more, but I've actually been around and coached two. And uh, we, had, we had one, uh, we have, you know, we've had a few here. And certainly, we all know who the most recent one was, who's dominating in the NFL right now. But they're special. And when you have a special guy, it makes all the difference in the world um, to your whole football team. Make no mistake, we see that every day just going down the street to Foxborough, right? I mean, don't think for one second. I mean, that guy right there is a special, special guy. Um, so... Everybody in the country is in, in, in the hunt to find some degree of a special guy, you know, on that continuum. But if you don't have one even at the base of that continuum, it's hard. It's very, very hard. And so since I've been here, our goal has been to get out there and just kind of re-recruit re that whole room. And I, and, and I think right now we, we have re-recruited that room now. Now we've got to let that room blossom and grow. You know, and, and, and how right will you be? I don't know what that percentage is, but you better be right on one, you know. And um, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, grab as many guys as you can because air on numbers in that room, you know. And, and, and that was something that, you know, when I got here, I didn't have because you, you, you got you to gotta have numbers in there to create that, you know, because, you know, it's got to foster, you know. You don't know it in year, necessarily in year one or two, witnessed by Matt. I mean, you know, I forgot, I don't know, you guys know better than me. I think it was redshirt freshman year or whatever where he, where he started to blossom and became who he was, which was just a special, special guy. Uh, Coach Mike Galtieri, Lights, Camera, Sports. Harold Landry getting a lot of uh, hype this preseason. I'm guessing coaches know that as well, opposing coaches. He's going to be double teamed a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Who on defense should we look for who's going to emerge in that next class coming up behind him uh, to that focus on? Well, I've said this right along. I mean, <laughs> we have three really good pass rushers here, okay? But Zach Allen is going to emerge a, on a breakout year this year. I promise you. He is an elite player. And that'll be a mistake if you turn him into a single block. Uh, Wyatt Ray is going to become an elite pass rusher in an elite conference. You know, we're not playing in, in one of these lower-level conferences. Those three guys are very talented. Wyatt's really developing. You saw Zach at the end of last year. I mean, that's a big athletic man. And, and of course, Harold had his breakout year last year. So I think you're going to see three of those guys, which then makes it much more difficult to start scheming just Harold because those other two guys, they're going to get home now. I mean, they're good. Zach Allen is, is he, he's a he's a six foot almost a, almost six foot five two two hundred eighty five pound athletic guy. I mean he's the real deal. So that's a good thing. <laughs> you know that's a good thing. Now we got to work on our depth interiorly. You know we lost a you know good player in there in the middle. Yep. Steve, the uh, the early success came from the running game when you first got here. Right. And the line has had to mature. How do you feel about the running game? I think you're going to see the, the running game really mature now because the line's maturing and the backs are maturing. You know, when I got here, um, you know, through some fifth-year transfers adding in, um, and then, of course, Andre. Um, but Andre wasn't – really hadn't done anything yet. 
But we put that together and we had a, an elite running game. And then when Murph came in here, we, we changed our style a little bit. We had some more spread principles in there and some option principles. And with Murph and uh, with John, when he was healthy as a true freshman, um, really had a, had a pretty elite running game. I mean, you know, as we knocked off a number of whatever at USC here in our, our stadium. Then we lost our offensive line, which has been well chronicled. And, um, you know, there was a void in there because there was no middle class. And um, so we played some guys in here, quite frankly, that really had no business playing. They're too young. Um, but they did. That's been well documented. But now, you know, Aaron Montero is now a veteran player. Chris Lindstrom, I love to say this because it, it actually – for. I've been coaching the old line my career, but this kind of amazes me. So I say it only for my own amusement, okay? You know, I mean, he's playing at 265 pounds as a true freshman against Florida State. He's now 310 pounds, and he's in a really good player right now. But when he played, he had no business being on the field, you know? And we lost that red shirt with both of those guys. But that's life. And, and, and so now the line's maturing. And the running backs are maturing. And that's – John Hillman had his best spring ever. And he's had an unbelievable offseason, and he's looked fantastic in camp. You know, um, Travis Levy, young freshman, came in here. I think that kid's going to be a really good player. Um, Davon Jones, you know, Davon Jones is a strong back. And, of course, you know, A.J. Dillon's in here. And he's a different, different cat now. I mean, his ability – his speed, power, and ability to cut with his size is very unique. So we, we've got to stable the backs. And if we can stay healthy up front, we got to, you know, that's a, that, for anybody. I mean, you know, stay healthy up front. We don't, I wouldn't say we have unbelievable depth, but we're going to be able to be up front with enough experience and enough size to be able to play in the level of defensive fronts that we play against, and we will run the football. We'll be able to run the football. Now, our goal is... We also, I mean, our tight end room is, is phenomenal right now and uh, in our wide receiver room. This is the fastest. Uh, Rich Gunnell, he was a great player here. He's been here a long time as a player, as a GA, now as a coach. He said he's never seen this much speed in a BC wide receiver room ever. So we've got some fast guys that have been around a little bit. We've got the tight ends that are very multidimensional. They're very good players. The offensive line's improved. The running back room is improved. Now... Let's go document how much the quarterback play improves. That coupled together will, should spark for a, a much needed and much better offensive output. Mm -hmm. Coach, so on the topic of the offense, uh, Coach Leffler, he has a track record for going to places and having a lot of turnaround jobs. Yep. And I'm curious what you saw of him in his first year and sort of um, what you see going forward for this year. And, and yeah. that I mean, he has always <laughs> – He's always had to go into tough situations. It's amazing, I, you know. It's, um, you know, some people walk into great situations. He's walked into tough ones where he's had to really be a part of rebuilding it. And that's painful sometimes, you know. And uh, but he's done a fabulous job, you know. Um, last stop he was at, he did an unbelievable job rebuilding that offense. Wasn't there though to reap the final rewards of that. But he's done a fabulous job revamping here and and helping us to develop what we're trying to develop right now. Uh, we were together at Temple when I went in there, and uh, he did a great job of that. I mean, he's a he's a, a a really outstanding quarterback developer, really, and um, a really bright guy, and, and and a taskmaster. And he's done a really good job. You know, this is um, this has been you know quite a quite a big project. You know, on offense right now to 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 mature our, our football team, to recruit it and mature it. And, 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 and we feel like we're really heading down a great road right now with that, you know, but, uh, but it's been a process. Well, uh, when I went to Temple, um, you know, there really wasn't an established quarterback there. <laughs> I mean, those themes sometimes are, you know. Uh, so we had to really work at trying to find out who would play quarterback there. And that's why when I was there, we went out and recruited and committed one of the best quarterbacks ever to play there was P.J. Walker. But I left to come here before we had a chance to really uh, see the fruit of that labor. But um, um, I think, you know, it goes back to someone else's question here sometimes. When you go into these, you know, 
places that have established depth at quarterback, it makes that process a little better. When you don't have that, it's a tough process. It can, it can it create havoc for many a guy. So, um, you know, at Temple, that was we had an uh, older offensive line. We had a really good running back, um, but an un, unproven quarterback room. That's what happened there. We ran the ball extremely well there. Played great defense, you know. My, my, my deal is come in, get the defense right. Play great defense. Start it there. Try to get the running game right, and then go from there. And that's kind of what we did there, kind of what we did here. Well, I mean, you'd love it to be immediate, but, you know, we all know things, certain things take time for certain reasons. But I think, you know, we knew this would be a, a work in progress. And the uh, most important thing was getting to the right quarterback. And, uh, you know, and then getting a system established, kind of who we, who we wanted to be, big picture, you know. Year one was a maximize who we had. That's what we had to do year one. We did it. We maximized that. Year two with Murphy, <clears throat> that was, I, I knew exactly what his strengths and weaknesses were. We had to maximize Murphy. We did that. Year three, we never had a chance to do anything. You know? And last year, we put the system together, and we plugged in a fifth-year guy, and we managed it the best we could there. And now we're trying to refine that system because we got the system we want and get that trigger exactly the right way. That's the long or short version, however you look at it. Hi, Steve. Are there any speed guys out there that can replace Miles and Tyler in the return game right now? A whole host of them. Honestly, a whole host. I mean, we're fast right now. We have speed. I mean, Jeff Smith is really fast. I mean, you saw that in our conference. He was really fast. You saw that against Notre Dame two years ago. He was really fast. I mean, he's a documented fast guy. Mike Walker is a documented fast guy. Uh, Taj Torres is a documented fast guy. Um... Oh, gosh. Oh, Hamp, Hamp Cheevers is a documented fast guy. Uh, those guys can all run. Shoot, John Hillman's a fast guy. I mean, John Hillman this summer clocked out pretty darn fast now. He can, he's got some wheels. He can go. Uh, ben Glines can run. Um, Kobe White can run. Uh, <laughs> Christian, he's not a return guy, but Christian McStreva, he's a big guy. He can fly. I mean, he can fly. I mean, he can go. I mean, there's, there's a lot of guys. That, I'm probably missing somebody really quickly ratcheting through my head here. A.J. Dillon can fly. He may be 247 pounds, but he can fly. I believe he's a 10, 700-meter documented electronic. I mean, that's moving now. I mean, so, you know, we got some guys that can run. Um, Isaac Yahidam can – I mean, he might – Isaac – it's a debate whether Isaac or Jeff are the two fastest guys on the football team. <laughs> I mean, you know, and then Will Harris is not very far behind him. And Cam Moore, they all run. It, it took a while to get there. They can run. But everybody we play against can run, right? I mean, they run. This is a fast, a, a, a really heavy defensive conference with great speed, and what makes it elite the last couple of years is they've had some elite quarterbacks. You mix that together, that's why there's been three national titles in the last, what, five years or whatever it is? I mean, that's why. I mean, it's not, it's not a great mystery. I mean, I've seen it in other places and other conferences. It's kind of what it is. You've been talking some big picture stuff. No coach ever wants to inhibit a guy from going on to the next level, and right. Harold certainly could have. Sure. But as you, you talk some of this big picture stuff, how critical was it to get a player like that yeah. back as you're continuing to build yeah. this because you're going to need him to contribute? He's a marquee and get more player. People here. He's a marquee player. You know, you try, first of all, here's what's, here's what's really interesting about all that to me. He didn't redshirt. So he's going to leave after three, okay? I mean, he's a marquee player. Our goal here is to get him into their fourth and fifth years, right? You know, he popped in a year, and then it was going to be boom. You know what I mean? But the, he made the right decision, big picture for him, and that's what I told him. I said, you got to look at this big picture, what's right. I can't do it. I can't look at it selfishly through our eyes. It's all based on getting your degree, 
you know, where you're projected. Can, can, you, can you lift your projection? And so thorough research was done. He happens to play for a guy that's one of the most respected guys in pro and college football. He couldn't have got a better source who's more connected at the next level to give you real information, not the fake information. Okay, So he made a really good, smart, well-thought-out, educated decision. Is there a, no one has a perfect crystal ball. You know, we all know that. You just take all the facts that you can, you make the bet. I've already seen improvement. Why? I think because two factors. One, he has an elite position coach. And two, um, he was only a – he only – been here three years. He was young. He was really young. When he got here, he was young and immature. So, I mean, like, that, just being a, never mind a fifth-year player, just being a fourth-year player for him, I think is, I can see already, is making a world of difference. I mean, I, now, does, will that, does that ever equate out with your stats in the end? Oh, who knows? I mean, there's so many factors that go into affecting those things, and nobody cares. They're all going to look at the film, press play, and look at what they want to go see to make their determinations. And right now, I'm telling you, that plays in, that has, has increased. So we, do, we all keep our fingers crossed. We do the best we can. We try to keep everybody as healthy as we can. And, you know, you look back one day and you hope that, well, that was a great decision for everybody. Yeah. But no guarantees for anybody. You talked a bunch about uh, the guys up front on defense so far. Um, can you just talk a little bit about Connor Strahan? Yeah, uh, love to. His, his role on the team, what you see for him uh, this coming year, his final year in the program. He's a, again, he is an elite player. Connor Strahan's a marquee player. You look, you, you look, and you say, without trying to like, you know, you know, leave somebody out, but but Connor is an elite player. I mean, he is a guy that. What what do people? What 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 makes him different? He's big, strong, and extremely fast. He can, he really can run, okay? And he's a four-year starter. And so Connor uh, is, is set to have just a phenomenal football year, but he's at the apex of our defense, right? So here's a guy that is veteran player who's really, really good. He's at the apex. Of, he, and, he and Ty Suave have played a lot of football here together, right? So he's a violent player. He's a competitive, tough-ass player, okay? And, um, you know, you just like being around them. You know, I mean, he loves the game. Like, this is coaching stuff, but, like, what do you love about marquee great players? They usually have very similar things in common, right? Like, Harold is relentless in his preparation and taking care of his body and how he approaches. Connor Strahan is relentless. You know, it's, it, I've been around those guys, and those guys all possess that kind of common. They're, they're self-driven. I mean, you don't have to coach them on effort. There's nothing. I mean, they want greatness every day, and they push themselves for it every day, and they can't get enough. Connor is like that. So is Ty Swab. You know, so is like Will Harris in the back end. He's another apex, right? Safety, linebacker, Ray Smith, nose, rush ends. You know, it's how you build it. So Connor's integral part of this whole thing, right? Why? Another reason, tangible reason why. People want to take a big, strong guy like that, and they want to say, okay, we want to get him out of the game, we want to put a, a spread uh, fast set in and make him match up. Good. He can match up. He can run with them all. That's not – sometimes we used to, you know, we've had guys in the past that, you know, you got nervous where someone would pick on them by getting them in third down and man coverage, isolating them and putting a fast guy on them and beating them. They were good against the run, but they were a liability against the throw. This guy does it all. Coach, you mentioned earlier, drive around campus, a lot of construction, football yep. facility. Just talk about, generally, how has that helped you recruiting uh, last couple of months, uh, knowing that it's going to be built? Well, the obvious, but it, it all goes together, you know. Everything's momentum. Like, football's momentum, everything's momentum. You know, uh, we finished strong. We got the first bowl win in nine or ten years. We... Had a great offseason. Uh, there's, 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 there's building going on, commitment to athletics, $200 million going into athletic facilities, brand new indoor weight room. It just creates an energy and a buzz and, 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 and just speaks to the commitment level of Boston College you know, to, to build its athletic program. And, um, and all, it all, I mean, rec you know, recruiting is sales, it's business. It's, you know, you, you know, you're trying to create 
you know, uh, energy and a buzz and, and momentum. And, um, and, and, and kids in recruiting pay attention to f- facilities. Now, you don't have to win the, you don't have to have the biggest, the baddest, you know, we don't need a bowling alley and a barber shop and all that, you know, because we got so many other great things that other people don't have. But we got, but what we have has to be good and nice and the ability to help us develop our athletes, which is what we're doing. So, you know, it's exciting. It's very, very exciting. It's an exciting time at Boston College right now, athletically and academically as well, but we're talking about athletics. It's a very exciting time. There's a, I mean, you talk about BC has a great buzz nationally for everybody. You know, the person who just wants to come and go to school here. You know, I mean, shoot, I don't know how many percent of our students here come from California all the way across the country, you know, because of the reputation of the place. So there's a good positive vibe, a good positive buzz about everything um, and tangibly seeing the actual work being done there, you know, because some guys always used to come back and say, yeah, I heard about that thing back when I was here 15 years ago, you know, well, it's going on right now. Like it's going on in a big way. I mean, I haven't seen this many trucks and shovels in my life. I can't even park my car anywhere for crying. I've had about enough, you know, I got to walk a half a mile, but it's, uh, it's worth it. I walked three miles just to get the, all these facilities done and, and, and really make this happen because uh, I think it's going to be big and for the future of BC Athletics.